So what did we see? Real neurons are somewhat like relo units that we use in deep learning. So this is a transfer function. The output depends non-linearly on the input. Mathematically, a relo function is simply f of x is max of 0 and x. What does that mean? We will have a flat region below 0 and a linear region on the right. By the way, the gradient is 0 on the left. I just wanted to remind you there. Okay, so, but now that we have relo units, let's look at the XOR prime because XOR prime is the famous example of, um, of a really, really simple problem that you can't solve with a linear system. So what's the XOR problem? Uh, it's a truth table. We can have the continuous version of that, but it basically means if the two value inputs are the same, so if x1, x2 are both 0, or they're both 1, it should be 0, the output. If at least one of them is 1, it should, if exactly one of them is 1, the output should is 1. No, it should be, it's an easy function and should be easy to learn that. So let's visualize that. What we have is we have uh, that basically for 0, 0 and 1, 1, we need to get the, an output of 1. And for the others, we need to have an output of, uh, of, uh, of 1. And what we can directly see here, there cannot be a linear solution to that. Now, like the only solution would be to have like a hat in this space. And uh, linearly, that's just not possible. Okay, so uh, what does that mean? Can you draw a line that separates the positive from the negative examples? Uh, you can draw a line, but it wouldn't be a straight line. Now, like, and, uh, and it's very clear why this is the case. Now, like the, in a way, the ones are uh, in between ze the zeros. So it's possible impossible to solve the XOR problem with linear learning. And in fact, that realization led to the death of the field of neural networks at some point of time. What you see here is the phrase usage of the, uh, in English of the phrasing neural network. And you saw how it in a way grew up until the mid to late 60s and then it tanked. And that is when people started realizing, oh, this problem can't solve XOR. That was a little bit of a problem because people had been bragging that this kind of linear neural network that they didn't call like that, that it cannot, um, uh, that, uh, that it would talk like humans, uh, be able to do absolutely everything. People did crazy press releases. People were worried about the impending doom of human civilization because neural uh, networks can do it all, all the much better. And then they realized that's not happening, suddenly not at that speed. And with that, the field tanked. I just want to to, to make sure you all realize the similarity, you know, like uh, we are like very actively debating the end of human intelligence <laughs> and, uh, and people do big press releases about how worried they are about it. So um, in this specific case, the problem couldn't solve XR. For today's deep learning systems, there's other things that they can't solve and we will hopefully get the chance to talk about it later in the course. So, now what I want you to see is if you take a multi-layer perceptron, you can actually solve the XR problem. So what will we do? We give you a widget where you can set the weights. It's like a nifty little piece of code that allows you to play with things. We give you that widget and you can click on the lines to set the weights. I want you to try if you can by hand get it to solve the XR problem. 